Guys, how's it going? Welcome to Skirt Garage. My name is Connor. I don't know how you got here, but I'm definitely thankful that you made it. My plan for today is a complete product review of the Porterfield R4S brake pads. And on top of that, I will be doing a complete DIY. Uh, so yeah, sit down, strap in, and let's get started. <laughs> Like I mentioned earlier, today's video will be a complete DIY and a product review. And let me just get something straight. I love DIY videos. As long as I keep making any YouTube videos, there will be DIYs. Because one, they've saved my bacon a million times. And two, they're kind of like time capsules. My hope is that I can make these videos well enough that in 20 years when my son hopefully has a Jaguar or F-Type, he can come to my videos and he can learn how to change his brake pads or do whatever. So that's why I love them. And speaking of videos, if you guys are stopping by for the first time, please consider giving this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. You guys know I'd really appreciate that. All right, let's get started with this product review. So I've got the Porterfield R4S brake pads. They say racing. Um, I kind of got a street pad, so it's not really that crazy of a race pad. Um, they look like this. They have the same generic shape and outline as the existing Jaguar F-Type pads. The biggest difference is there's two. One is this crease that comes down the middle. I think that's just like a relief point inside of the brake pad. And I actually believe that allows that the dust to come into this and be expelled through this relief point. Another thing is the bevel. And this is the main thing I wanna talk about. Um, even on the existing Jaguar pads, they have a bevel and it's a cut on the 90 degree angle that these pads make. That bevel is to allow for a smoother transition of the pad on the rotor. I believe the more intense the pads are, like a racing brake pad or for example, has less of a bevel. And the reason why is if you look at it, if this had less of a bevel, it would have more of a surface area connection with the rotor. Two, I think it would have more bite because the contact angle of the pad to the rotor would be lower. Make sense? So those are the main uh, kind of design differences between the uh, Porterfield race brake pads and the pads that are existing on the OEM cars. So yeah, I'm really excited to get these on because man, the OEM pads just make an unholy amount of brake dust. And I'm really excited to see what these end up looking like. So let's get started with that DIY. I'm gonna show you how my front pads came in an unboxing video now. All right, we are going to be unboxing the front brake pads from Porterfield. Um, as you can see, they come in a little cardboard box. Uh, that first one looks great. The second one does look like it sustained a little bit of damage on that front left, on the bottom there, probably just from the other pad resting on it. Not that big of a deal, you know, these are a little bit more economical than their um, counterparts. However, the main thing I would like to draw your attention to is the clips, and specifically the orientation and if they're held on very good. If you look at this one, the clips are a little bit mangled, not that big of a deal. You can pinch those back with your fingers before you line it up and put them into the pistons. However, this one is the big problem. I've actually had to send back uh, a batch before in the front and in the rear because of the way that they get stacked inside of that little cardboard box. Sometimes the clips can fall off and they're not easy to put back on. And even if you could put them back on, you might worry about them falling off at some point down the road and causing a horrible grinding inside of your caliper. So moral of the story is to check your brake pads before you jack the car up and before you get started on this procedure, all right? We're gonna put the car in brake maintenance mode. Now what you have to do is hold down the parking brake button and the gas at the same time and for two seconds each, turn the car off, then back on. So, one, two, one, two, car off, car back on, release. OK, 
Okay. Brake park or park brake and maintenance mode. All right, we got it. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, guys, before you get started, I want you to go ahead and pop off the little cover and look at the brake fluid reservoir. Make sure you're at a good position before you get started. Now we're going to be removing the anti-rattle clip. Uh, it's held in by three separate prongs, one up top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. As you can tell by the grimace on my face, I was a little bit worried this thing was going to come flying off, but it doesn't. You just pop out the top one and then gently remove the middle and it should come right out. Okay, it is time to remove the caliper bolts. There are two of them, one up top where I'm pointing. This is where I'm going to show you uh, how, to, how to remove it. You're just gonna put in a nine millimeter hex. It's kind of an unusual attachment. You might have to go ahead and buy that before getting started with this job. I know I had to, so it's kind of an unusual tool. Once you break the bolt and unscrew it, you're gonna have to remove it with a little bit of finesse. You kind of have to jiggle it, move it around, move the caliper itself to allow it to come free. Once it's out, just do me a favor, look at it, make sure it's not corroded or any sludge or anything like that has built up on it. After that, we're good to go. All right, now that the caliper bolts are removed, I need you to decompress the caliper pistons. You do that ironically by pulling on it or pushing on it as hard as you can. That decompresses the piston and allows you to remove the caliper. Now it is time to put a coat hanger or something up on the upper control arm to hang on to the caliper once you've removed it. There's a lot of tension on the brake lines if you don't hang it up properly, so don't forget this step. Okay guys, now it is time to remove the brake caliper. Go ahead and shimmy it up and down, back and forth. Uh, that kind of creates some room in there and allows you to reflect and look at the brake caliper. Now that it is off of the rotor, go ahead and check the inside and outside pad. Make sure everything looks okay. And after we get everything looking good, we're gonna take that coat hanger off and hang it up as to relieve it from any tension that it could face on those brake lines. Once it's, it is hung up, we can now remove the brake pads. Uh, it doesn't matter which order you take them off in. I think I went ahead and took off the inside brake pad first, checked it out, looked at the glue, and then I went ahead and removed the outside brake pad. With both brake pads out, we are now on the cleaning step. We are now ready to clean these brake calipers. Just go ahead and snap your fingers and voila. There we go. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit uh, overzealous with this um, brake grease. I went ahead and put it on all contact points. You're supposed to do it very lightly. I tried to, but I didn't want any brake squeal. I was absolutely sick of that with the old brakes. I think whoever did it before me did not do a very good job. So I kind of put it on all contact surfaces. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see me going a little bit ham with the brake grease there. Regardless, I don't really care. Uh, my car doesn't make a sound now, so I think that's the only thing that really matters to me. Now it is time to place in the Porterfield pads. I went ahead and orientated the pad first off, made sure I had the correct orientation. Then you pretty much just put the clips into the existing pistons, um, the holes there. The inside pad was pretty tricky, so I had to grab some paper towel. I wedged it in between the caliper and the rotor, and I used that kind of brace to yank, pull, whatever I had to do to get the pad to seat inside of the pistons. Once I got that pad in, I then moved on to the outer pad. Uh, once again, first off, I had to check the orientation to make sure I got it correct. Make sure the fitment looks good, then I rolled it over and installed that pad. It clips in pretty nicely. Um, just give it some gentle pressure kind of back and forth. Uh, check the outside to make sure that all of the little clips are seated correctly. Go ahead and remove the hanger 
uh, get the little wires out of the way and you are free to install the caliper back onto the rotor. I gave it a couple gentle little taps here and there to make sure everything lined up. And now we are good to go. All right, next I'd like you to clean and lube up the threads of the caliper bolts before you go ahead and reinstall them. All right, now we're going to reinstall them. Make sure that you find the correct orientation with fingers first. If you get in there and you just start torquing them down with your wrench, you can very easily strip these bolts. So do it by hand. Make sure that you find the correct threads first. And once that they have successfully gone in and you know that they're on the correct threads, then you can then tighten them down with a torque wrench. Okay, now it is time to tighten these down to the torque spec. And the appropriate torque spec on these is exactly 43 foot pounds. So get both bolts to 43 foot pounds and we're good to go. A couple loose ends to tie up here. Uh, I'm putting back some of the wires that go around the brake caliper. And you can see I'm holding now the brake sensor clip that goes inside of the pad material. And basically when the pad material gets worn down enough, it'll pop up on the instrument cluster. Thing is, it's very finicky. So I'm not even gonna return it because I'm down here all the time. I know what my brake pads look like. After I go ahead and move away that little brake sensor clip, I'm going to return the cap to the caliper bolts on the top and on the bottom and that is about it guys we are ready to uh, put the uh, anti-rattle clip back on and this thankfully is a lot easier than it is to remove it you basically just pry down the top half while holding the middle portion once you've locked that into place you then now pry down the bottom half until it clips into where it ought to go press in the middle and now you are set let's go ahead and put that wheel back on Remember when you're torquing the wheels down that each lug needs to be torqued to exactly 93 foot pounds. That is the OEM manufactured recommended torque setting. Now that we're all set, please do me a kindness and look at the brake fluid reservoir to make sure that you haven't gone over. Okay guys, now we're moving on to the rear brakes. As you see here, I've got the rear brake caliper already hung up with a zip tie. In front of that, I've got a torque wrench. You're gonna be placing that torque wrench on two 15 millimeter bolts. You can see I'm pointing at the top one now. There's an identical one just like it uh, underneath. These are actually on there pretty tight, 85 foot pounds. So use some leverage, get them off, and then theoretically it just reflects back and you can remove the pads pretty easy. Here you see the pads out. Um, all in all, the, the rear pad change is very simple. You can see it right there. You just put the other two back in, you line it back up, you replace it with the two 15 millimeter bolts. I went ahead and put the cord, uh, you see there, back into the rear brake pad and the job is done. Well guys, I've had these brake pads on my car for about two months and there's a couple things I can tell you for sure. One is there is a lot less brake dust, a lot less. Now it seems like I used to get a lot of brake dust within about three days of washing my car. Now it seems like to get to that same amount of brake dust, it takes like a week and a half or almost two weeks. So significantly less brake dust for sure. The second thing I've noticed is that there is less bite on initial brake pedal. And you know, you can take that how you will. Uh, in bumper to bumper traffic, it's definitely a lot smoother, which I kind of like, but um, there is kind of a race car feeling to very hard um, bite when you first touch a brake pad too. So um, if you are, you know, tracking your car and you want immediate brake, uh, brake biting ability, then you probably stick with the OEM pads. If you want it to be a little bit smoother around town, then you might really like these R4S brake pads. The other thing I will say though on that point is that the that's just the initial tip into the brake pedal. The actual like stopping ability of the brake pads is almost identical. I don't think there's any real difference. Once you're really pushing on the brake pads, 
I don't notice these taking any further distance to stop um, or that they're any better either. I think that they're honestly the same with regards to power when breaking. It's just that initial bite that's different and obviously the lack of brake dust. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you're curious uh, about these brake pads, definitely give them a try. You know, they're pretty cheap. It was like 130 for the front and like 99 for the rear. So all things considered, really not too bad. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're stopping by for the first time. I appreciate you guys. Be safe and we'll see you next video. See ya.